Hello brothers and sisters and this is Christina speaking today is May 8, 2023 and I hope you are doing well and so I have message from the Lord but before I share it I want to confess that I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God who has come in the flesh on earth and died for our sins and was buried and rose on the third day. Hallelujah. Amen. Before I go through the message of today, I just want to inform you that YouTube has deleted many of my videos about the vaccine. And unfortunately, I'm not going to post them again. This is so sad, but please pray for me and for this channel. Now I'm going to share with you the message from the Lord. And from this message, you are going to see how very close we are and also to understand that the day of the Lord is approaching. I'm going to share with you a few dreams I had from the Lord on May 4th. I am only going to share two of them, understand that these dreams have different messages and meanings and so a part of them I will be sharing next time. In one of these dreams, I was taken to a place where people were gathered in prayer. After a few minutes, I got there. A man looked at me and said this, Should we expect the return of Jesus Christ in 20 years? At that time, I heard a voice saying to me, Tell them, the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back any day now. The dream ended. I'm going to share with you my second dream in which I saw an ocean in front of me. At the edge of the ocean, there was a fishman who was fishing. I saw many fishes in that ocean. The fishman was only able to catch one fish. The dream ended. Now I'm going to share with you what the Lord said about these two dreams. Coming back to the first dream in which I was taken to a place where people were gathered in a prayer and one of them did ask me if they should expect the return of Jesus Christ. In 20 years then I heard a voice saying to me, tell them that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back any day now. And so the Lord said that many today don't believe that he's coming back. He said that even those who believe in his return, many of them are not living in obedience to him. And because of that, many will be left behind. The Lord said that the return of Jesus Christ in this dream means the rapture. The rapture is any day now. He gave me a scripture which is about the rapture. Matthew 24 from verse 31 to 50. The Lord wants you to read and study all the scriptures he's giving you always brothers and sisters pray and take everything to the holy spirit for discernment and understanding normally i don't read the scriptures except when the lord wants me to and so today i'm going to read a few scriptures as I said before, I speak four languages and English is not my first language. And so I hope you understand and you forgive me for any mistake I might make in a reading or in my pronunciation. And so I'm going to read from verse 31 to 50. And this is Matthew 24. I suggest that you read the whole chapter in order to understand the message. Verse 31, And he will send his angels 
with a great sound of a trumpet, and he will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn this parable from the fig tree, when its branch has already become tender and it pours forth leaves. You know that summer is near, so you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words by no means but my words will by no means pass away. But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood they were eating, and drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken, and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief will come, he will have watched and not allowed is a house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household, to give them food in due season? Breast is that servant whom his master when he comes, we will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, My master is delaying his coming, and begins to beat his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he's not looking for him and at an hour that he's not aware of, and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Brothers and sisters, I hope you are watching praying and ready every day. Nobody knows the day or the hour except God alone. The Lord will come as a thief in the night and will surprise you. We must live in obedience to Jesus Christ. Understand that Obedience to God is a must. The Lord says that if you love him, you obey him and you keep his commandments. I hope you are listening. Now I'm going to share with you the message from the Lord about my second dream in which I saw an ocean with a fishman 
I saw many fishes in that ocean. And the fishmen only did catch one fish. The Lord gave me two meanings about the fishmen. And I'm going to share the message for all of us from the Lord. I will be focusing on only one meaning because the second meaning has another whole message which I will be sharing next time. And so let me share with you the two meanings the Lord gave me. The first meaning, the fishman was Jesus himself. He did catch only one fish from many. The fish he did catch represents the bride and his wife, who is described in Psalm 45 and in many other scriptures in the Bible. This is very, very important to understand these last days we are living in, brothers and sisters. The bride from his wife. One bride from his wife was chosen from the church, from many. The bride from his wife is one woman described in Psalm 45. And you must understand that we are not the brides. We are the body of Christ. We are the children of the bridegroom and the bride, as it is described also in Psalm 45. The Lord showed me that we are the children of the bride. If you don't get that, you are in trouble. And you need to read the Bible, pray and seek the Lord to give you understanding of the scripture. Time is very, very short. The second meaning which has a message today for many of us. The fishman is also a watchman, a servant of God, who is blowing the trumpet, warning people about what is about to happen and calling them to come to repentance. As a result, many are not responding to his call, but only a few. When he said that, he gave me Matthew 22, verse 14. Many are called, but few are chosen. He also gave me Matthew 19, which I'm going to talk about. I suggest that you read the whole chapter, Matthew 19, as well, in order to understand the message. I'm going to read from verse 16 to 23. Now behold, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I might have eternal life? So he said to him, If you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. He said to him, Which ones? Jesus said, You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not be a false witness, Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All these things I have kept from my youth. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor, 
and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me but when the young man heard that saying he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions then Jesus said to his disciples Assuredly, I say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to stop here, brothers and sisters, and I hope you will read this whole chapter. Now I'm going to share with you the message from the Lord about this scripture. And this is the message for many of us these last days we are living in. This rich young man wanted to be sure he will live eternally. The Lord gave me a scripture, Romans chapter 2 verse 7, which says, Eternal life for those who by patient continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. My understanding, we must be doing and doing that which is good. The Lord gave me another scripture, Hebrews 5 verse 9. Hebrews 5 verse 9, which says, And having been, having been perfected, he became the author of eternal life to all who obey him. My understanding from the Lord about this scripture, the blood of Jesus Christ is the only purchase of eternal life, but obedience to Christ is the appointed way to it. Eternal life is the only true life. Acts verse 20. The way of entering into eternal life is by obedience, brothers and sisters. Obedience to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our life. He is the only way to the Father. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 5 to 11. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. There is no other way. I hope you get that. My understanding is that, and this is the whole message. The key message today is the obedience to Christ. Obeying to Christ means keeping his commandments and this includes faith in Jesus Christ for that is the great commandment and this is in 1 John chapter 3 verse 23. My understanding is that it is not enough for us to know the commandments of God. We must keep them. And so, this young rich man did ask Jesus what to do in order to enter into eternal life and he told him to say or and give to the poor and for him he did not like that because he was attached to his possessions. And so my understanding from the Lord is that to sell all and give to the poor will not serve. 
unless you come and follow Christ fully. If you give all your goods to feed the poor and have not love, it profits you nothing. You are wasting your time because without love, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven, brothers and sisters. The Lord gave me two scriptures to help you to understand this message, Luke 21 verse 4 and 1 Kings 17 verse 14. My understanding is that the love of the world draws a stranger than the most pressing necessities. And so, this young man was rich and loved his riches and therefore went away. Brothers and sisters, do not set your heart upon things of this world. The Lord gave me a scripture, Psalm 62 verse 10. This will help you to understand this message. And so, for this, the Lord said that, like this rich young man, many have gone away from him to their possessions today. And so, the Lord is telling them that it is not impossible to God yet to recover them and bring them to a better mind. Brothers and sisters, with God all things are possible. If you are living in this situation, turn to Christ right now because he wants to recover you. He wants to change you. He wants to wash you with his precious blood and to save you. And this is a call to repentance before it is too late. The Lord said that the way to heaven is too or a narrow way and the gate that leads into it a straight gates, but it is particularly so to rich people. I'm giving you the words he gave me exactly. Now I'm going to give you a question from the Lord. And with this question, I hope, brothers and sisters, you are going to sit down and examine your heart. If you are one of these rich people, you need to wake up. And so the question from the Lord is, if you were in the same situation as this rich young man who went away sorrowful because he did not accept the terms the Lord gave to him in order to enter into eternal life, what then would the soul be afterward when your possessions will be gone? and all hopes of eternal life gone to? I'm going to repeat this question. If you were in the same situation as this rich young man who went away sorrowful because he did not accept the terms the Lord gave to him in order to enter into eternal life, 
what then would the sorrow be afterward when your possessions will be gone and all hopes of eternal life gone too. Brothers and sisters, take time and think. I'm going to finish this message with a scripture from the Lord. Isaiah chapter 1 from verse 16 to 20. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now and let us resign together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and labor, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Brothers and sisters, share this message. If you have not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, turn to him right now. Receive and accept him as your God and Savior. Believe and repent before it is too late. God does not wish anyone to perish. Get baptized of water and spirit. Love God. Obey him and keep his commandments. Time is very short. The rapture is any day now. And only those who are living in obedience will be taken in the rapture. I pray for all of us to be found worthy to be taken in the rapture. Heavenly Father, in your Son's name, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Amen.